Hey guys, welcome back to Ganshee Plans. I hope you don't mind my um, gorgeous duds. This is just far too comfortable. I got a nursing hoodie and I've been living in it because it's finally gotten a little bit cold here. We're getting some rain in Southern California. Today, I am going to tell you the story of our younger daughter's sleep training sort of learn sleep learning journey it has been a journey and i haven't updated you in a long time so i thought today i'm going to tell you the whole story front to back um she is currently four months and about a week and a four months and yeah a week and a half two weeks something like that um not quite four and a half and we we've got there right we're like pretty much there um she's sleeping through the night in her own crib um or at least next to us in in her bassinet and it's it's great and it was not great at the beginning as you have seen if you've been following me so start the whole story from the beginning um she was born in september and the first couple of weeks were really great for sleep as they generally are for a brand new baby uh she came home and basically was just sleeping all the time we could just you know feed her to sleep, whatever, put her down in the bassinet. She was fine. She didn't care. That is beautiful and wonderful. And it doesn't last as you probably know if you have kids or especially if you've had them recently. Um, as soon as she started to become more aware of her existence and our existence, um, she started to wake up a little bit more. And from about two weeks, it got really tough. I posted a video around that time where I was like filming at four in the morning. I'll post that one in the corner. I was going crazy. It was just too much. Um, she just would not fall asleep. She would, like we could kind of get her down, but then for one thing, she didn't like to stay asleep in her crib. She would max like five, 10 minutes sometimes in her bassinet by herself. Um, and even if we were okay with just saying, all right, fine, I'm going to stay up awake with you and hold you all night. She wouldn't even go to sleep for like two, three, four hours sometimes. And it was so insanely difficult. I, uh, I recorded a little video for myself, just for my own self to remind myself like how difficult it really was and I was losing it. I had been up for two hours already and she just wouldn't stop crying whether she was held or in her swing or whatever and I was getting so frustrated. So that video was when she was one month old and she uh, didn't get better right away. We ended up giving up and just co-sleeping. We decided, we made the you know calculated decision that it was safer and just for our sanity as well as you know for everything to just do a safe co-sleeping rather than trying to keep fighting her on this and i was able to most nights get her to sleep with us in bed only waking up to eat um, and so uh, she would probably eat maybe three times a night something like that her first stretch started to get a little bit longer maybe like four hours something like that so I would put her down because she would start to get really sleepy um, and cranky and ready to go to bed around like 7 7 15 and so I would do a real quick bedtime with her and lay down with her in bed and so my husband had to take the toddler and do her bedtime all by himself because I was stuck in bed with you know attached to a baby um, after, you know, that was actually a period of time where I got a decent amount of sleep for the first time since she was born because I was stuck in bed with her. So I would doze off and fall asleep and sleep from seven to, you know, six or whatever. Um, and then I was still on maternity leave. So I had no reason to get up in the morning either if, when my husband was there to take care of the toddler. So that was overall pretty good period of time for sleep. But, um, Still, it's not ideal. I don't want to be, you know, a slave to my baby falling asleep every night. Eventually, um, she got more and more comfortable with that routine that I would be able to sneak and roll away after she had fallen asleep and spend an hour or two getting stuff done in my office um, because I couldn't really be working in the office during the day because I had a toddler who gets into stuff. Um, she finds it hilarious to just steal my stuff and run away giggling, so... The office just stays closed when she's home. 
Um, but I was able to sneak off and work for an hour or two. And this is when I was getting all of the, the stuff set up for my shop release. So I really wanted to get all this done so that I could release it before the end of the year. That was my goal. Um, so this was in like November, December. Um, I was you know, showing Bridget to sleep, leaving her in bed, rolling off and going to do my own thing for a while. And then whenever she would wake up for her first feed, then I would come back in bed and go to sleep with her. And that, it was a thing, it like, it, it got us through. And I was really concerned that it would end up lasting for a long time, that we wouldn't be able to transition her, because I was still looking forward to her being four months old, that was the cutoff. We're gonna sleep train at four months. We slept tra sleep trained our older daughter, Agnes, um, around that time. I think a little bit earlier, because we had lost it, but she was never as bad about sleeping, at least on in the bassinet by herself. Um, we were able to get her down into the bassinet and she would sleep, you know, and wake up for feeds. And that was just the way it was, because she's a baby. Um, and so we did some like cry it out, fuss it out, Ferber kinds of sleep, of training um, and around three and a half, four months. And she was great. She, I think only ever cried for like 15 minutes. So I was pro sleep training and always planning from the beginning. Let's, let's sleep train this new one at four months. And I was just counting down the days to four months old um, and knowing I still had, you know, a month, two months ahead of me of, co-sleeping I was you know asking on reddit like has anyone else gone from co-sleeping to Ferber cold turkey is that going to be traumatizing to go from like those extremes um but it turns out that that wasn't necessary her first breakthrough was actually over Thanksgiving weekend we were still co-sleeping we decided to spend Thanksgiving with my parents we we're trying to be you know safe it was only three households so that was the limit at the time um and we were still co-sleeping and so fortunately my parents had just gotten a new bed so they had an actual bed for us uh, to sleep in which was nice in the guest room um, and so we were sleeping with my daughter there and since we had the grandparents they were helping to get her to sleep in the evenings uh, generally her sleep like the way I would get her to down for a nap or for whatever because we're holding her for naps too um, is I would kind of cradle her up against me with the pacifier in her mouth and a blanket over her. And that would be like, all right, these are the signals. It's time to take a nap or go to sleep. And so she would go to sleep like that. And then there was just one night I brought her to bed. I was still holding her with the passy and we slept in bed like that. And um, she went like only eight, maybe once that night because she had the passy to suck on. And so she started getting really good at using the pacifier and it started to become like a thing. Like she started to enjoy it. And we, oh, it was a revelation. I loved it <laughs> because she wasn't doing all of that comfort nursing as much. She was able to get farther into the night without eating. She would still fuss and I would still have to reinsert the passy, but it was a transition step, you know? And it's quicker and easier to put the passy in her mouth and kind of hold it there a little bit gently while you doze back off. Um, and instead of, you know, flipping over and unlatching, blah, 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 I ended up getting several bad back aches because I wouldn't need to flip over as often. Um, and so I was on one side and I couldn't flip because she would be behind me. But other than that, it was a revelation and I loved having the pacifier um, in bed with us. So because of that passy use, she was pretty much night weaned by like three months old, I would say. She would probably wake to eat like once in the middle of the night, you know, three, four, five, something like that. Um, and the rest of the time we were just reinserting the pacifier. So that really helped um, because we were right there. It was so quick and instant. And she got used to falling back asleep with the help of the pacifier, but falling back asleep pretty quickly and sleeping through most of the night. There were uh, a couple of nights over the course of this period where she wouldn't go to sleep either like she would wake up for her first wake up and be up and for like two hours um, like it was back at the beginning and that was very frustrating when it happened but it was only a few times each time felt like the end of the world but we got through it um, but mostly things were okay we were in bed together and it was okay I had a couple of things on a Christmas wish list and one of the gifts that we got was this guy, the Baby Merlin's Magic Sleep Suit. This is a swaddle transition product. 
at least that's what it's designed to do. So like your baby's rolling over, you can't be swaddled anymore, so you want their arms out. Well, this is kind of a little bit bulky, so it kind of mutes the Moro reflex before it's completely gone. Um, that's the idea, it kind of muffles their movement a little bit. Um, but we weren't swaddling anymore because she was in bed with us, and it's not recommended to swaddle if she's in bed with you. Um, for one thing, just for overheating purposes, but also for a little bit of mobility. Um, so she wasn't actually being swaddled anymore, but I didn't think she'd be okay without a swaddle in the crib. So it was like the day after Christmas. Um, she was getting cranky for a nap, and so I do the thing. I hold her, I give her the pacifier, I put the blanket over her, I start, you know, swaying and bouncing and shushing, and she starts fighting it. Um, usually she'll be like, yes, this is what I want. I know I'm tired, I want to go to sleep. But no, not this time, she was fighting it. And I was getting frustrated, and after 10, 15 minutes of this, I'm like, you know what? You're gonna be, you know, struggling against me and crying in my arms. I may as well just put you down in the crib, see what happens. And so I go to pull out a sleep sack, and then I realize, wait, no, not a sleep sack. Let's try out the new Merlin suit. I put her in it, she conks out and takes a great nap. I try it again for bedtime, and she slept through the entire night that first night. Absolutely beginner's luck. <laughs> because it didn't magically make that happen all the time. But I knew from that first night, we've got something here. She's finally ready to be in the bassinet by herself. I'm not sure how much she was aware of that, like if she wanted to be on her own or if she was just capable of it. Because the fact that she was really fighting me tells me that there was something that she wanted to change, right? Like she was ready, I guess. Um, and she may have been ready for longer than I had known, but I was, really the whole purpose of the co-sleeping honestly the whole purpose of Ferber for me is that I am lazy and I don't want any of these kinds of methods that involve going in more often than I need to extra kinds of shushing and patting and all of these like gentle sleep training methods which if they work for you that's amazing I think some of the methods like you know the, the patting and shushing or you, you know the sitting next to the crib or whatever some babies will calm down without you picking them up and others will just get angry. Um, Bridget turns out she's okay if you give her the passy to calm her down. So that was what we ended up using as our sort of go to bed crutch. But anyway, ahead of myself, we started using the sleep suit as just basically a sleep sack, her, you know, top layer. It's nice and cozy, um, especially now that it's winter. Uh, we were using like mittens and gloves and stuff for a while because her hands are so cold. Um, so we would put her in the sleep suit, put her in the bassinet, give her her passy, and then I would lay down on the bed next to her and hold the passy in her mouth while she's in the bassinet next to the bed. Um, and she would eventually, you know, suck it well enough that it wasn't falling out or whatever. She would start to put her hand up to kind of hold it in. Um, and she would fall asleep and that'd be fine. And then whenever she would wake up and eat her passy again, I would put it back in for her. That was whether I was, you know, up doing things still or in bed next to her. Um, the, the thing that actually helped just because of the height of our bed is I had had the bassinet perpendicular to our bed, but we're, we're in the pack and play with the bassinet attachment. And so the ends of the pack and play kind of have a shape like this, but the sides are flat. And basically I turned it so that they're parallel and that made all the difference because now I can actually see her from my pillow instead of having to like get up and look. So I don't know why I didn't do that sooner. Um, I don't, it's just, yeah, do, do that if that's an option for you. So you can actually see her and I can actually reach in easier, get rid of the, uh, the passy in the middle of the night. So we did that from three and a half months. So for like maybe three weeks or so from Christmas until she turned four months old. She was doing great. I knew four months, she's doing great, and I was happy where we were, but I also knew that we could do better. And I knew that she she felt like she was ready. You know, there were some, a little bit of, sort of some small changes that we thought might be the four month sleep regression that were happening from around three and a half months and on. Um, and I still think that probably, it was a pretty mild sleep regression, maybe because we had already, you know what? Probably when we started this was around when, when the sleep regression started. Um, so I knew that she was going to be ready, that she would be able to handle it. You can always back out, but this time we decided to do the Ferber method. I never read the book. I can't vouch for any of that. All I know is that 
With Agnes, we did full extinction, which is like you don't do any check-ins, and she never cried more than 15 minutes. Um, but I wanted to try the Ferber thing because people say that, that you know, periodic check-ins is a good idea. So the night, it was the night before she turned six months because that was a Friday night and I wanted to get the full weekend to get the worst of it out of the way while we didn't have to work the next day. So that Friday night, uh, we put her down. She cried for, you know, I, don't, I think it was only two check-ins. The first was like three and five minutes and that was it. But see, the thing is with her check-ins, we were doing the pacifier. I don't think that Ferber recommended a pacifier, but I knew that that would get her down. And so the idea is give her a period of time to fuss and figure it out uh, on her own without the pacifier. And then if that doesn't work, when you do the check and you give it to her. And if she's got that or er, sucking urge enough, then maybe it'll stay in long enough to fall asleep. Otherwise it'll fall out and she'll have to find her thumb. She has, since we started sleep training two weeks ago, gotten a lot better at finding her thumb. And I don't think that's a coincidence. Um, but she still loves the pacifier. Like I, between the two, I really hope that she sticks with the pacifier. Um, my older daughter's two and a half is a thumb sucker. And I don't know, how do you, how do you wean a thumb sucking? I probably have like a horrific idea of it because my sister <laughs> sucked her thumb until she was, I don't know, like seven or something ridiculous like that. Um, and so I probably am thinking that it's going to be a huge deal in my head, whereas it's probably not that big a deal. We just try to remind her at this point that um, she should only be sucking her thumb when she's falling asleep, not like in the middle of the day. So that's what we're trying to work on. Anyway, four month old. We, uh, the second night was perfect. No wake ups, no, nothing. Um, I think in, in one of those nights, maybe the first or third night or something like that, I did feed her in the middle of the night. Um, but after that, basically I have enforced that pacifier instead of breastfeeding thing until five in the morning. If she wakes up at or after five, I'll bring her into bed and we'll nurse together until, you know, it's time to get up. Um, but other than that, she gets the pacifier after a period of wake up time, but like after a, like a Ferber check-in window, those got up to like 20 minutes and she never needed a window longer than 20 minutes. I was able to just let her figure it out. And for the last two, three nights at least now, she hasn't even, you know, maybe fussed enough to like wake me up, which is incredible. So she's done really well. It is crazy. Those first couple of nights of Ferber, you do not think it's gonna work. It sounds miserable, but they, they pick it up really fast. After that four month sleep regression, which if you're not familiar, if you're not in the thick of it and researching Google all the time, basically instead of a regression, it's a progression. I've heard it said, um, but basically they move from their like newborn sleep cycles to adult sleep cycles, the way it's going to be for the rest of their life where it's three phases and you've got the REM cycle in there. And so once they've made that transition, they're able to, to learn really fast. And, um, I mean, who knows? Like, like I said, every baby is different. Our older daughter never fussed more than 15 minutes. Bridget cried for half an hour or so. Um, she, she, there was one tough night, um, in the middle of it around three or four, uh, days in. And other than that, I guess they call that the, um, <laughs> the burnout or I forget what the terminology is, but there's like one night, most of the way in, that's like a spike in crying and then they give up <laughs> and they learn, they figure it out. And she's just doing really good. So I'm just, man, once you have a baby who knows how to sleep, it is amazing. I do recommend sleep training to people if they feel like they're on the fence about it. I like to push them into it. It's obviously an important, a, a individual personal choice for you and your baby every baby is different. Every parent is different. Um, but I think I may have said this in a sleep training video I did with my daughter, but, uh, you don't get bonus points for listening. That's my biggest advice is, uh, especially if it's bedtime, right? Like the bedtime initial crying period of time, like set your, your timer, and go sit in the bathroom with the fan on, go outside, put in headphones, do something, turn off the monitor until it's time to check in. Cause you don't get bonus points for listening to them cry. But the other thing is time 
literally slows down when a baby is crying and it is the hardest thing uh, to do the overnight wake-ups. That was the thing we never did with Agnes. We never trained for overnight wake-ups. They just eventually resolved themselves. Sometimes things resolve themselves and honestly this whole journey was Bridget resolving it for herself. She taught herself, she got herself where she needed to be for Ferber to work for her. It obviously doesn't work on a one month old, but she was not there and she got there on her own. But with Agnes, we never did overnight wake up sleep training. Um, and she just figured it out on her own. With Bridget, we did. We did Ferber windows for middle of the night wake ups because I knew already that she wasn't going to need to wake up in the middle of the night and eat because she was using the pacifier. So we were able to night wean before we did Ferber. I I would do things the same way next time, I think. Like, I don't regret the bed sharing. I felt guilty about it at first, but, like, because health providers have to tell you what the AAP recommendations are, but the AAP don't have kids. I'm pretty convinced of that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so laying in bed and listening to her cry is very difficult, especially that one night where she was just, it was, like, three full windows. Um but the the those are my my two tips are you don't get bonus points for listening so put in headphones or something and the second one is set a timer because time slows down when a baby is crying and you cannot rely on like oh it feels like it's been 10 minutes because it feels like it's been 10 minutes two minutes in <laughs> and so i actually i have like a, a smart watch so i turned the volume off so that it was only vibrating and I set timers and so if the if the timer didn't wake me up it was because the baby was already asleep and that way I was able to not look at it and not keep thinking about it um, so that that was one thing that helped but yeah definitely set a timer and also like you often assume that when you wake up because you hear the baby cry you're something about that maybe it's just my brain but I think it's kind of universal that you think that you've been hearing it longer than you really have because like you hear it when you're asleep and then you wake up but that feels like a longer period of time than it really is i don't know if i'm explaining this well but when you hear her crying across the hall or wherever your brain goes oh she's been crying for a long time but really she hasn't and you have to start your timer as soon as you wake up and you know, make it a five minute window before, like even if you're not sleep training, just give them five minutes to try to figure it out on their own. Like that doesn't have to be a whole thing where you're like, this is going to happen and you're going to go to bed by yourself no matter what. You could just be like, let me just give it a few minutes. Um, bringing up Bebe calls that la pose. Um, you know, and I, I haven't read the whole thing because it sounded a little bit weird and elitist and I returned it to the library. Not the point. Um, I think that that is everything I have to say. If you have questions or like want my guru advice, because obviously I know what I'm talking about, leave that in the comments below. Basically, I got really lucky with two kids that do pretty well with sleeping, at least at this point. Um, honestly, right now, our toddler is the one, I pointed to her bed because it's right here. Um, our toddler is the one who's doing those like middle of the night wake ups or like there's no Ferber windows for toddlers because she uh, will just call out and keep shouting mommy, mommy until we come back and she's like, I want the fan on. I want a different book. I want a different stuffy. Can you sing me another song? It's like, no, I can't come in anymore. But um, Bridget's the good one now. <laughs> That's everything, uh, like I said. So don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. I post videos twice a week and I'll see you in the next one on Thursday. Bye. Thank you.